Over 2,000 years ago, ancient Chinese scholars observed the changing patterns in our natural world, the climate, the turning of the seasons, and astronomy. These scholars measured and divided the sun's annual movements into 24 equal parts, creating the 24 solar terms, which was used to govern agriculture in ancient China. Even to this day, this invention still guides the lives and traditions of hundreds of millions of Chinese people. Every year, around February 4th, the Chinese people welcome the first solar term, the beginning of spring, wearing silk flags in their hair and tying carrots with red cords to the trees. All the villagers celebrate the very first night of spring together. Hello, my name is Dominic. I'm originally from the UK, but I came traveling to China almost 25 years ago, and I've stayed here ever since. In 2016, something called China's 24 solar terms was included on UNESCO's list of intangible cultural heritage of humanity. Now, as I mentioned before, I've been in China a long time, but I'd never heard of the solar terms before. What are the solar terms, and what significance do they have in today's China? 2,000 years ago, it was a simpler time. It would be eons before science would produce modern technological comforts that we enjoy today. But despite this simplicity, the Chinese of ancient times were highly observant, especially when it came to astronomical and atmospheric phenomena. Taking into account the changes in the shadows cast by the sun throughout the year, along with the lengths of the days and nights, they charted and divided the annual motion of the sun into 24 equal segments. Each segment is one solar term, and the full cycle of 24 solar terms repeats itself year in and year out. Once this cycle was conceived, the ancient Chinese were allowed to clearly plan their year in advance, especially when it came to agriculture. Is there any use for the solar terms today? Are the 24 solar terms still a concept that are being passed down to other generations? With these questions in mind, I embarked on a journey into the unknown. Shitian is the first destination on my mission to understand the solar terms. Located in the mountainous and undulating landscape of southwest China's Guizhou province, Shitian has numerous waterways that wind their way through its rugged mountain landscape. Twelve ethnic minorities number among the 460,000 people who call this place home. The area's unique traditional culture and its road system don't make it the easiest place for a tourist, but they certainly contribute to an authentic, incomparable ambience. In my experience, any attempt to quickly grasp on a city's history, culture and customs should start with a visit to a local museum. I arrive in Shitian Museum hoping to find traces of the 24 solar terms. There are countless examples of traditional crafts, art and folk culture on display at the Shitian Museum. But as younger generations increasingly seek their fortunes farther afield, many of these traditions may be fated to exist only in a museum. One particular folk culture tradition, however, is luckily still being practiced today. Shuochun. Li Chun, or the beginning of spring, as it is known, is the first of the 24 solar terms. It marks the starting point on the wheel of the four seasons, when the world is all revived.
In Shitian, every year on Li Tun, the ancient custom of spring announcer begins. People who play a central role in the gathering and its associated ceremonies are known as the spring announcers. They are the ambassadors of spring. In the past, farmers counted on spring announcers to announce the arrival of spring and the beginning of spring plowing. Fen Wanming is admired in his county. He continues to carry the torch of his ancestors as the fourth generation spring announcer. Feng is at his busiest each year on the 10 days before and after Li Tun. At this time, he walks the streets and goes from house to house to announce the arrival of spring in order to ensure everybody knows that it's time to start plowing. But announcing the beginning of spring isn't that simple. Essential tools and cultural artifacts like spring calendars, seals and carved spring oxen need to be prepared in advance. Spring calendars are carved onto wooden blocks and contain the 24 solar terms and applicable farming information for each term. Spring cattle are sculpted from wooden blocks. This Shotwell, 哎,对。哎,反过去就摆到阿边了。Oh, it's the most beautiful calendar ever. The spring teller was an occupation authorized by the emperor in ancient China. A hat and gown signifying their rank was their uniform, representing their status and level of knowledge. Everything is ready, but before setting out, Feng pays his respects to heaven, earth, and his ancestors. He seeks the blessing of his work and looks to empower his chanting to benefit the farmers. Chinese use joyful colors in farming ceremonies, showing their respect and appreciation of nature. Oxen have helped Chinese farmers for nearly 3,000 years. With this in mind, 
The Chinese also have a custom in which they show respect to cattle. One of the activities associated with spring chanting is for the spring announcer to stir the paper-made cattle using colored wooden sticks. This is meant to rouse the cattle from their subdued winter state and encourage the farmers to prepare for spring plowing. After the ceremony, the real cattle are also warmed up. The strongest cattle in the county begin to set out on their first foray into the fields under the command of the most experienced farmer, signaling the start of a new year of working on the land. Spring plowing is a top priority for farmers. My task now is to follow Fung from door to door to announce the beginning of spring. Every year at the beginning of spring, Feng Wanming traverses the mountainside and visits all the villages around Shitian. He will typically greet more than 30 families every day. A more appropriate name for this practice should be spring singing, as the words are actually sung out loud rather than chanted. Sowing at the right time is essential for reaping a good harvest. The essence of a spring teller's lyrics are the 24 solar terms. These include the terms for weeding, the term for sowing, and the terms for harvesting. Feng knows his intricate solar term lyrics by heart. But the lyrics are not written in stone, and he occasionally ad-libs his lyrics and wings it, with improvised blessings tailored to different situations and conditions for every different family. Feng spreads cheer to all that welcome him. Nobody wants to miss out on a blessing to kick off the year. There is a strict time frame for chanting spring. Ten days after Li Chun, the practice is over for that year. Feng then goes home and rests for a while, rewarded with tribute money. Wow. 
我现在挣不到钱了。他每年收春也赚很多钱。是啊，你看，是他都说的呢。交春前十天，后十天，二十天，一天一百块钱，嗯，两千块钱。谁给你钱呢？租人家。租家嘛，我们到每家每户去收春，他要到你家交，他就给你钱。给。最多的一家还大概能给你多少钱？有的都给了一百多。Tanting Spring provides a good source of income for the spring announcers. These payoffs encourage spring announcers to pass on this tradition. The Chinese believe that spring is a key time of year, and whether or not the year will be a success depends on a good start in spring. Solar terms to Chinese farmers are about more than simply timing. They are a representation of a natural cultural heritage. When farmers start the spring plowing, Feng's job is done. He stores the tools and props in his old house on the mountainside. You tell me, you say, you from when you start? From the age of five years old, we start to learn to plow. Most of us Yeah,要好五块钱。五块钱。嗯嗯嗯。一天。哎，要好五块钱。那现在你现在做这个？现在现在就随随随便做就是两百块钱的工资啊。你现在做这个锁存到李村就忙。哎哎哎，对对对对